Hello everyone, good day. I am Krayzena Idolus Reyes, and as you may have noticed, this is a continuation of our previous report, the Object Relations Theory of Klein. Due to her bold and insightful descriptions, some theorists expanded and modified the Object Relations Theory. And among those prominent theorists, we'll be discussing about John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. They are the ones who led the development of the attachment theory and the strange situation procedure. So let us first find out who is John Bowlby. John Bowlby was born on February 26, 1907, and he is a graduate of the University of Cambridge back in 1928. He was very interested in natural science, medicine, and psychology, subjects which he have studied in the university. He also received rigorous training and instruction with regards to developmental psychology. After graduating, he then volunteered to work at a school for maladjusted children. Because of his experience on the effects of early family relationships in the development of personality, he decided to take child psychiatry as his career. He undertook training at the British Psychoanalytic Institute and became heavily exposed to Kleinian ideas. He became an army psychiatrist during World War II, and in 1946, he was eventually designated as the director of the Department for Children and Parents of the Tavistock Clinic. He returned to London after spending some time at Stanford's Center for the Advanced Study in Behavioral Sciences, and later passed away on September 2, 1990. Several years later, in 1950s, Bowlby became very dissatisfied with the object relations perspective. It was primarily because of the inadequate theory of motivation and its lack of empiricism. So, if you have remembered in the past discussions on our previous subjects, we have came across the term empiricism. Empiricism refers to the concept or approach that states that sensory experience is what triggers the formation of ideas or knowledge. Because of the lack of empiricism and inadequate theory for motivation, Bowlby realized that the object relations theory can be integrated with evolutionary perspective. The latter refers to an approach in which our traits, such as personality, is a product of natural selection, so to speak. Bowlby believed that attachments formed during childhood have an impact on the child during which influences his adulthood. The attachment theory came to be because of his observations on humans and infants. He noticed that they both go through similar sequence of reactions when separated from their primary caregiver. He identified these stages as the protest stage, despair stage, and the detachment stage. On the first stage, the protest stage, the infant will cry and resist soothing when they can't see their primary caregiver, typically their mother. The second stage, on the other hand, is called despair stage, and this is because when the separation between infant and caregiver continues, the child becomes quiet, sad, and passive. And finally, on the last stage, the detachment stage, as the name suggests, they become emotionally dis detached from other people, including their caregiver. Caregivers, typically the mothers, are disregarded and avoided by the infants when they return. Because of this, they no longer feel upset when their mother leaves them. So, these observations became the root for the development of attachment theory. And as a result, Bulb 
Bowlby published the theory as a trilogy entitled Attachment and Loss. The attachment theory of Bowlby has two assumptions and they are the following. Number one, a responsive and accessible caregiver must create a secure base for the child. And number two, a bonding relationship or lack thereof becomes internalized and serves as a mental working model on which future friendships and love relationships are built. In short, the attachment theory suggests that a caregiver should make the infant feel secured because the lack thereof will affect and will most likely influence the future relationships of the child. Now that we are done with John Bowlby, let us move on to the next person, Mary Ainsworth, and find out what is her contribution. Mary Dinsmore Salter Ainsworth was born on December 1, 1913 in Glendale, Ohio. She was a graduate of the University of Toronto and have received her BA, MA, and PhD all in the same university. She also became an instructor and lecturer in University of Toronto, but she did not only settle there. During her long career, she taught and conducted research at several universities and institutes in Canada, United States, United Kingdom, and Uganda. Ainsworth and her colleagues, inspired by the theory of Bowlby, created or designed a method to measure the form of attachment style that occurs between the caregiver and the infant, and they called this the strange situation. Strange situation is a 20-minute laboratory standardized procedure, and it is devised by Mary Ainsworth in which its purpose is to observe attachment security between children and caregiver relationship. She devised this assessment technique in order to investigate how attachments might vary between children. The procedure starts with the mother and the infant being alone in the playroom. Then, soon after, a stranger enters the room. After a few minutes, the stranger will begin to interact briefly with the infant. The mother will then leave for about two minutes, leaving the stranger and the infant alone. After another two minutes, the stranger will then leave the room, leaving the infant completely alone. The critical part is how the infant will react upon the return of the mother, and this is the basis of the attachment style rating. Three attachment style ratings were found by Ainsworth and her associates, and these are secure attachment, anxious resistant attachment, and anxious avoidant attachment. In secure attachment, upon the return of the mother, the baby feels happy and enthusiastic and will most likely initiate contact. One prime example is a baby running or crawling towards the mother for a big hug or cuddles. Securely attached infants are confident in the accessibility and responsiveness of their caregivers, and this becomes the foundation for play and exploration. In an anxious resistant attachment style, infants tend to become upset. However, when their mother comes back, they seek contact with her, but reflex or rejects attempts at being soothed. Simply say that the infant gives very conflicting and contradictory messages in contrast to secure attachment. The third attachment style is the anxious avoidant attachment. Infants tend to stay calm when their mother leaves and they usually accept the stranger. Once the mother returns, however, they will avoid and ignore her. In both insecure attachments, the anxious resistant and the anxious avoidant, infants has an insufficient ability to engage in effective play and exploration. 
Now that we have reached the end of the discussion, I hope that you were able to understand the concepts mentioned in the report. Um, I guess that would be all. Thank you and God bless.